Ahoy mateys and welcome back to Trick Bricks. I'm Jamie and today we're going to continue our 30th anniversary Pirates retrospective series by taking a look at set number 6265 Saber Island, which was released in 1989, contains 96 pieces and includes three minifigures. In the US it retailed for $15.50. While relatively small, this is just a classic blue coat set, and it's a great little way to shore up your Imperial forces, both in manpower and in real estate. To start things off, we're given the same awesome base plate we saw in Shipwreck Island, with this printed water and land design. I don't think I mentioned this in that review, but it's actually a light gray base plate. Over to the left, we've got a cannon behind this short wall, and it's placed on a large turntable piece, so you're able to aim it at any approaching scalawags. Of course, we get a pile of cannonballs to go along with it, and they'll come in handy since this bad boy is of the firing variety. I never had any firing cannons when I was a kid since they weren't available in the US at the time, but I know I would have had a blast with one. The right side of the tower is home to a lone palm tree, which you can never have enough of, and I like how it kind of hugs the tower on two sides. However, as always, you can position it however you want thanks to all these joints that make up the trunk. And I'm actually going to go ahead and move it right now so we can get a better look at the tower itself. Comprised of two stories, plus the roof, it's a relatively simple build, made up in large part by these panel elements with the window, with one of them even featuring some very nice red brickwork printing. An unlit lantern is mounted here on the side, waiting for sunset, and if we spin it around, we'll see that the interior is pretty barren, to be honest. On the ground floor, we have a spare cutlass clipped to the wall here, and that's about it. I might consider adding a barrel full of muskets or something down here just to liven it up a bit. And once again, our poor Imperial soldiers are left without a way to get to the next level. Luckily, I've got another spare ladder they can borrow. I forgot to mention in the last episode that adding ladders isn't entirely period correct as far as LEGO elements go, since they wouldn't be added to the parts catalog until 1992. But I have to believe that designers would have used them here if they'd have had them at their disposal. But anyway, the second floor has just about as much going on as the first. One thing I really do like though is this fence piece, which was a nice design choice. There's really only enough room up here for a single minifig to stand watch, but I think it's sufficient. There's a bit more space up on the roof, as well as some additional fence detail on three sides. And capping off the tower is a large imperial flag mounted on a dark gray lance piece. I love these things, and it would have been easy for LEGO to cheap out and use one of the small ones, but this guy really does a nice job of finishing off the look of the tower in my opinion. And since our soldiers need a way to get to and from Saber Island, we're given a small boat. It shares the same basic designs as most of the other boats in this series, with two seats, a small flag at the rear, and a pair of oars. I should take a second to mention that about 90% of the oars you find will have stress marks here where the paddle meets the handle. At least that's been my experience, so I'm always excited when I find one of these in mint condition. And besides all that, we get a small band of soldiers to man the outpost. We've already seen all these guys, so I'll just go through them quickly. First off, two Imperial soldiers with blue and white uniforms, red epaulets, brown backpacks, and black shako hats. And all these guys came with the standard Lego smiley face. And their commanding officer. He gets the same uniform, yellow epaulets, a bearded face print, and a black tricorn hat. And of course, they're all fully armed and ready to defend the crown from those pesky pirates. Like I said in the beginning, this was an excellent way to build up your Imperial forces, but I think where it really shines is when you pair it with the other blue coat sets that share the same color scheme. Here it is adjacent to a few things forthcoming in this series, and altogether they create a truly majestic Imperial fortress. Park the Caribbean Clipper outside, and you've got a blue coat display worthy of any Lego shelf in the world. But even on its own, I still enjoy this set, despite lacking a bit in the detail department. If you'd like to add it to your collection, you can expect to pay somewhere around $30 for a used copy, 
while sealed versions seem to be going for right around 200. I made the mistake of trying to bricklink this together and wound up paying more than I should have when you factor in shipping charges. Plus, I ended up with varying shades of white on some of the bricks. Even after a long hydrogen peroxide bath, there's still some differences that I'm not entirely happy with. So my recommendation would be finding one on eBay or buying a complete set off BrickLink. But that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this review, feel free to leave a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be back soon with the next episode in the 30th Anniversary Pirates Retrospective series. But until then, this has been Jamie for Trick Bricks. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and play well!